ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير الواحد الاحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبد الله ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغمه وجاد في الله حق جهاد حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار الحمد لله all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our salutations on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his uh, favors upon us as we all know the situation in the lands of Palestine uh, Palestine has been ongoing for over a month now over one month of bombings over one month of killing over one month of destruction, uh, no sight, uh, no end in sight. And some people might feel a, a sense of defeat at this point that this is happening for over a month and the Muslims are not uh, having any relief as of yet. So people might be sen sensing a feeling of defeat and this is, uh, Wallahu alam, the intent of this campaign to pound the believers into submission, to pound them into defeat to bound, bound them into the state of hopelessness. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, that uh, along, as long as the believers have Iman, then there is no defeat. Iman is undefeated. Iman is undefeated, and Iman cannot be defeated. And the believer, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the situation is, the believer finds benefit in everything. No matter what the situation is, good or bad, the believer, uh, takes that situation and finds a way to make it beneficial for him. So it might be a, a case of temporary uh, defeat or we can say temporary uh, submission. But as the saying goes, down but not out. The Muslims are never out as long as we have Iman. Down but not out. And this is the case of the believer as Rasulullah says in the hadith, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ How amazing is the uh, situation of the believer in amrahu kullahu khair that all of his affairs are good no matter what happens and this is none not, not for anyone other than the believer this only applies to the believer where a believer can take a situation uh, of difficulty a calamity and turn it into something positive عَجَبًا لِأَمْلِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرٌ فَكَانَ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ That if a, uh, something good comes to, believe, to the believer, then he is thankful. He is grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is good for him. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ ضَرَّاءُ But if a calamity comes, a difficulty comes, صَبَر He's patient. He remains patient. And فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And that is also good for him. So no matter what happens to a believer, there's always a win-win situation. There's no losing for the believers. It's always a win-win. Whether the good comes, then they are thankful. When the bad uh, calamity strikes, then they are uh, patient. And this will be good for them. So what is happening is an attempt to break the will of the believers, to pound them into submission, and a state of despair, but this is not working, and it will never work. It will never work for the believers, because the believers always have a win-win situation. So when a believer has this mentality, then no matter what 
the any any outside enemy tries to do, nothing will be able to break the will of the believer. So how can you defeat a people? How could you defeat people who, uh, whenever, no matter what the situation is, they always praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The people who their homes are being destroyed, their family members are killed, they are being forced out of their homes and into different areas. Uh, and if you ask them, if you go to these people and you ask them, how are you? What are they going to say? Alhamdulillah. Even in despite all of the situation. So how could you defeat a people like that? Where no matter what has happened to them and you ask them, they will say Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes in the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam When Rasulullah would see something that pleases him, something good, he would say, Praise be to Allah, the one who by his blessings, good things are perfected. And when he would see وَإِذَا رَأَى مَا يَكْرَهُ قَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ But when he would see something that displeases him, then he would say الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ That we praise Allah on every situation. So this is the believer. That no matter what is happening, he's saying Alhamdulillah. So how could you defeat a people who have this mentality where they are they're being killed, they're being slaughtered, they're being bombed. And when you ask them how are they, they will tell you Alhamdulillah. You cannot defeat a people with this mentality. Uh, how could you defeat a people who, when they are threatened with the biggest armies of the world and the biggest, uh, the, 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 the most highest technology and whatever the case is, and they fear only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they don't fear anybody else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ It was said to the believers uh, during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the enemies have gathered against you. They prepared a big army against you. They've gathered all against you. So fear them. Be afraid of them. What did the believers say? What happened to the believers? All that happened is that they increased in Iman. They increased in their Iman. And they said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ And they said that Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of affairs. If you listen to uh, slogans of our brothers and sisters in Palestine, you'll hear this slogan all the time. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ And that's what they're saying despite what the situation is. So how could you defeat a people who, despite the threats of the most powerful armies coming against them, they say, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ You cannot defeat the people of that mentality. Uh, how could you defeat the people who they don't even acknowledge that when they are, uh, they, are, they, are, they are killed, they don't even acknowledge that those who have been killed are dead. They don't even acknowledge. They refuse to acknowledge and they deny that those who have been killed are dead. As Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدُ رَبِّهِمْ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And Allah says another verse, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدُ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not say of those who have been killed in the path of Allah that they are dead. Do not say that. They are not dead. Rather, they are living, but you do not perceive. In another verse, Allah says that they are being provided for by their Lord. So how could you defeat people who don't even acknowledge that the people who have been killed are dead? How could you defeat people who, where they view calamities as uh, they take calamities in stride with dignity Allah says in the Quran that if you feel pain and suffering then know that the other side also feels that pain and suffering but you have one advantage but you O believers you hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they do not hope for so how can you defeat people who have uh, this mentality? How could you defeat people who, whatever calamity strikes, they all, they all they view it as a way of raising their levels and expiating of their sins and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا يُسِيبُ الْمُسْلِمْ مِن نَصَبٍ وَلَا وَصَبٍ وَلَا هَمٍ وَلَا حُزْنٍ وَلَا أَذَنٍ وَلَا غَمٍ حَتَّى الشَّوْكَ 
Yushakuha illa kafarallahu biha min khatayahu. That Rasulullah says that the believer, no fatigue, no disease, no sorrow, nor sadness, nor hurt, nor distress befalls a believer. None of that befalls a believer, even the smallest thing like a thorn pricking a person, the prick of a thorn, except that this is an expiation of sins. An expiation of sins. So this is how the believers view calamities and view difficulties. So if this is the mentality of a believer, then how is it possible for a person of that mentality to ever be defeated? How is it possible? Amazing is the situation of the believer. Amruhu kulluhu khair. Inna amruhu kulluhu khair. All of his affairs are good. Even if calamity strikes, he is patient. When good times come, he is thankful. You cannot defeat a person who has that mentality. And there's a very uh, well-known statement of uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, who was one of the scholars of this ummah. And he had some uh, issues and difficulties with the ruling authority of his time. And he had some problems with some of his fellow scholars. And it came to the point where they, uh, he was threatened with a number of different threats. He was threatened with execution. He was threatened with being exiled. And he was threatened with uh, being put in prison. And he's a very famous, famous statement where he says, ما يصنع أعدائي بي أنا جنتي وبستاني في صدري What can my enemies do to me? My, uh, my jannah, my paradise, and my garden is in my heart. It is in my heart. And this cannot be taken away from me. إن رحت فهي معي لا تفارقني Wherever I go, my jannah, my garden is in my heart. It cannot be taken away. حبسي خلوة That putting me in prison, all this is, is khulwa. It is one on one time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَتْلِي shahada. And if they are to kill me, then this is going to be martyrdom. I achieve, attain and achieve the status of being a martyr. وَإِخْرَاجِي مِنْ بَلَدِي سِيَاحَةً And if I am thrown out of the land, then this is sightseeing. This is sightseeing. So this is the mentality of the believer. No matter what happens, all of it is good. How could you defeat a person where if you threaten them with imprisonment, this is alone time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you threaten them with execution, this is martyrdom for them. And when you threaten them with expulsion from the land, this is sightseeing for them. So a believer of this mentality can never be defeated. And so Iman is undefeated and a believer can never be defeated as long as he has this mentality. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين a believer with this mentality that no matter what happens, no matter what calamity strikes, no matter what difficulties come, a person who has this mentality can never be defeated, even if it looks like a defeat, even though it looks like a defeat. And once we change our mentality and we start to think this way, then this will allow us to navigate a lot of the difficulties and calamities that occur in daily life personal calamities and calamities that befall the ummah at large. When we change our mentality and we have this perspective that no matter what happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers and everything that happens is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is in some way beneficial and good even though we might not be able to see it. If we look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that a number of incidents that might have looked as setbacks or defeats, but in reality, they were victories. They looked like defeats, they looked like setbacks, but they were in fact uh, victories for the believers. One of them, and before we get to those, this is changing the perspective and having a positive outlook. This is the Sunnah of Rasulullah as we call it that, the half glass full outlook. You can look at a glass, you can say this glass is half full, and you can look at it and you can say this glass is half empty. All depends on your perspective, the same thing. The same glass, the same amount of water. But the way you look at it, 
will completely change how you approach that situation. It comes in the hadith that Aisha radiallahu anha report, she says that أَنَّهُمْ ذَبَحُوا شَاتًا فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا بَقِيَ مِنْهَا مَا بَقِيَ مِنْهَا That they slaughtered a sheep. And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked after, so after they slaughtered the sheep, they gave the meat of that sheep in charity. In charity. And so Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked Aisha, what has remained from that sheep? مَا بَقِيَ مِنْهَا قُلْتُ مَا بَقِيَ مِنْهَا إِلَّا كَتِفُهَا She said that nothing has remained from the sheep except its shoulder, except the shoulder. And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم answered and he corrected her. And he showed her that there's a different perspective that you need to look at this. And he said to her, قَالَ بَقِيَ كُلُّهَا غَيْرَ كَتِفِهَا That he said, no, rather, all of it has remained. All of it has remained. And what is not there anymore is the shoulder. In other words, what was given in charity, what was given in charity, that is what's remaining. That is what is remaining. What we get to eat, that is what is gone. Because now that's for our own personal benefit. That's not going to benefit us in the hereafter. But what was given in the charity, that is what is remaining. Baqiya kulluha. All of it has remained. Ghayra katifiha. The only part that, is, that, is, uh, that has gone is the part that we are going to eat. Because we are not going to get the rewards for that. Like we get the rewards for what was spent in charity. So this is the change in perspective that is needed to be able to navigate calamities and be able to navigate difficulties, personal and for the ummah at large. So we look at the seerah of Rasulullah We see that there are a number of incidents that appear to be de defeats, appear to be setbacks, but in reality they were victories. One of them is the Battle of Uhud. During the Battle of Uhud, many Muslims, many of the Sahaba were killed. Rasulullah was injured. He was bleeding. His uncle Hamza was martyred. And a number of different Sahaba were killed. But the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Battle of Uhud, and the way Rasulullah describes the Battle of Uhud, we see a different perspective. Allah says about the, uh, about the believers uh, in the Battle of Uhud, and, uh, and the result of this battle, وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْهُمْ شُهَدَاء وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْهُمْ شُهَدَاء That Allah will, because of this battle, He has identified who are the true believers from those who are not. And He has taken shuhada. Martyrs have been taken, and they have attained the status of martyrdom. The next verse, Allah says, وَلِيُمَحِّصُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And the believers have become purified because of this battle. And... Allah says in another verse, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ There were some of you who wanted this life, and there were others who wanted the Akhirah. And this became clear when it was not clear from before. We didn't know who, as one of the companions says, that before this verse was revealed, we didn't know that there were people amongst us who wanted the dunya only. We thought everybody was like us, wanted the Akhirah. But then when this battle came, then it started to separate. Who's, who wants the dunya and who wants the Akhirah? And so because of this battle, people became distinguished believers from those who are not true in their iman. And this is why Rasulullah years later when he passed by Uhud, and he said about Uhud, Jabalun yuhibbuna wa nuhibbuhu. That this is a, 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 a mountain that loves us and we love it. We don't look at Uhud uh, with, uh, as being traumatized by what happened in Uhud. Rather, we, we look back and, as, as, as a positive experience. Because this was an opportunity for the Muslims to correct mistakes. This was an opportunity for the Muslims to have martyrs go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was an opportunity for the Muslims to separate who is true in their iman from who is not. Also from the uh, events in the seerah of Rasulullah that looked like a defeat, but was actually in, in reality victory, was the Treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah. The Treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah. When the Muslims signed this treaty, this is a peace treaty that occurred between uh, the Muslims and the Quraysh. And the terms of this treaty on the outlook seemed extremely biased towards the polytheist. And this was something that was very obvious by looking at the terms of this treaty. And the Muslims were depressed and they were disappointed at the Rasulullah because he signed this, not at him, but they were disappointed about the situation that the Muslims had to sign this treaty, which they viewed as in favor of their adversaries. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different perspective, and He reveals Surah Al-Fatih, the beginning verses of Surah Al-Fatih, 
inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Where he called the truly of Hudaybiyah a manifest victory. We have given you a manifest victory. And he called this a manifest victory. So this was the treaty of Hudaybiyah. And this treaty, although it looked on the outset to be against the believers, it ended up being something very favorable for them. Because with a peace treaty, the Muslims were able to focus on da'wah. Rasulullah was then able to send out letters and send out emissaries, messengers to all of the different localities and, uh, and uh, different villages and countries and kings and leaders when he was not able to do that before. And he was able to focus only on da'wah without having to worry about defending the Muslims against possible attacks. So now they had peace, now he was able to focus his da'wah on the surrounding areas inside and outside of Arabia. And because of that, many people entered into Islam more so than all of the previous years before because of the fact that they had a situation of peace they could focus on da'wah and they were able to concentrate their efforts on calling the people to Islam without having to worry about fighting and defending themselves. Also from the events of the seerah, which seemed to be against or setbacks or seemed to be defeats against the Muslims, but was in fact uh, presented in a different way was the battle of Mu'ta. The battle of Mu'ta. This was a battle in which Rasulullah sent an army a small army, very small army, to the lands of the Romans. And there they had a battle in which they were outnumbered by a large amount. Only 3,000 Muslims, the reports indicate over 100,000 of the enemies. And Rasulullah sent this army and he appointed his cousin Ja'far ibn Abi Talib as the leader. And he said, in Qutila, or first he, he appointed his adopted, former adopted son in law, Zayd ibn Haritha, uh, as the first leader. And he said, in Kutila Zaydun fa Ja'far. That if Zayd is to be killed, then Ja'far is to take over. Wa in Kutila Ja'far fa Abdullah ibn Rawaha. And if uh, Ja'far is to be killed, then Abdullah ibn Rawaha will take over. And the battle occurred, and the Sahaba who were mentioned in this as the being the leaders, appointed leaders, they were all killed in this order. First, uh, Zayd ibn Haritha was killed, and then Ja'far ibn Abi Talib took the banner and then he was killed and then Abdullah ibn Rawaha took the banner and then he was also killed and the Muslims were then scrambling who were we going to put in, in charge and they appointed, they got together and they put Khalid ibn al-Walid as the commander of the Muslim army so he took the reins of the Muslim army and he realized that this is a situation where if we don't retreat then we're all going to perish so he looked out for the best interest of the Muslim army and the Muslim Ummah at large and the far-reaching consequences and he decided that it would be better if we pull back. And so he organized a tactical retreat and they retreated successfully back to al Medina. When they got back to Medina, when they got back to al Medina, the people were upset at, at, at this army and they started to call them uh, cowards and they said that you guys have run away, that they are furar, you guys have run away from the battlefield. When Rasulullah heard this, what did he say? He said, Laysu bil furrar. They are not uh, those who have fled. Walakinnahum al kurrar. But they are those who will return. They will come back, inshaAllah. Walakinnahum al kurrar, inshaAllah. No, they're not, they haven't fled. Rather, they, are, they have temporarily come back and they will return. And that's exactly what happened. They returned, and the armies returned. And within 10 years, that entire land became Muslim lands during the time of the Khilaf of uh, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an. So this is how the uh, Rasulullah looked at this situation. No, it was not, they didn't flee. Rather, they did something that is beneficial in the long run for the Muslim Ummah. And this paid off as the Muslims did return to this land and they conquered this land. So this is the mentality of uh, believers that situations might look to be defeats. It might look to be uh, setbacks. But in reality, we don't know what Allah has in plan, but we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. That we, uh, we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the best disposer of our affairs. So we have to change our perspectives and this will allow us to navigate all of these types of calamities, personal calamities, and calamities that befall the Muslim Ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant relief to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. 
we ask them to get, to get them out of the situation that they are in, to provide for them in, in ways and with means that they did not expect in the situation uh, in Philistine and across the Muslim world at large. Allahumma aslih ahwalana wa tawalla amrana warham mawtana wa shfi mardana wa taqabbal shuhadaana rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa turhamna lanakunana min al-khasirin rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة